Right now is the time where calling deer can be so effective here in the Midwest. Once you've got to that pre-rut phase where those bucks are becoming day walkers, they're rubbing, they're making scrapes, and they're certainly around checking does, or if you've seen some of the first bucks on does, it is the time for calling deer. Now, antlers have worked for me good pre-rut, and they've worked for me really well after that little lockdown stage that's kind of right there in the middle. Once a few bucks have actually bred does and they've bedded those first does, and now they're really on the move looking, antlers are something that they will come to. But there's some important things that you got to remember when it comes to this. First off, it's important when I talk about calling, whether it's antlers or a grunt tube, that you know what a deer is going to do, what their demeanor is, and what their response is gonna be. Number one is their scent. I keep telling you this, they smell, they want to scent check everything because they can trust their nose more than their eyes and their ears. So knowing that is important because Right now, if I see a buck where you're at, but my wind is blowing on a kind of a sketchy angle like this, if I were to call to you right now, if you were the buck and my wind is angling that way, the first thing they're gonna wanna do is number one instinct, check the scent, check the smell. So they're gonna immediately just start to button hook around and catch your scent. So this is really important when it comes to calling deer. If you see them first and they're on the move, you kind of have to think in your mind, are they angling towards my wind where I actually have to call right now to see if they will come straight at me? Or if I let them pursue a little bit further, again, if my wind's blowing this way and I first see them like this, but they're angling like this and like this, okay, well now I can actually if they're out of sight, I can now rattle. And when they go to check that wind, hopefully I'm gonna be able to get my shot right back here before they get to that. The next thing is their sight. If they can see you, then when you clack these things together, their ears are gonna give them a very good idea of right where you are. And if they can see that too, then they're falling back on their Next instinct, number two on their list, which is their sight, and they're gonna peg you and they're gonna put two and two together and they're gonna know that doesn't happen. So what I do is if they're moving in an area where the wind is right, then I'll wait for them to be obstructed so that I can call. If you don't have obstruction, if they're in the field, I've had opportunities where I've had to actually turn my back, be against the tree so that I can do this without them seeing this movement and this flash, okay? Now, another thing that you should always do when it comes to rattling is you have to be prepared. If you're gonna rattle, that means my bow is ready, my release is on, my back is against the tree. Usually I keep my seat down because if I'm rattling, and all of a sudden here comes a buck quick, I'm either gonna need to stuff these between my legs so I can get my shot quick, or I can even set them down on my seat or have your backpack where you can throw them in your backpack because it happens really fast. When they can't see and they're in a thick bedding area and they can hear that sound, they're gonna to wanna to try to get to within 30 yards of that sound very fast and then start looking. And if they pinpoint something they see, then they're going to that nose check. So always have your back to the tree. If they can see these antlers in this flash, sometimes you might have to turn around to try to conceal those. But again, rattling and being able to get these things out of the way is important. Now, my antlers historically have been big ones. I've had these for probably two decades. And it's my belief, and it was what I was taught, that big antlers call big bucks. I don't have interest in tickling little antlers together to where I'm gonna call in uh, an adolescent buck or a subdominant buck. I'm really wanting something that's gonna be big and come into a fight. So for me, these things make that happen. And by having bigger ones, it actually doesn't take as much movement to make 
the sound that I need. So it works great for that. Make sure you have ones that you can store and keep quiet on your way in and your way out. Now, when it comes to frequency of rattling and antlers, here's my method. I get in my stand in the morning and I wait for things to quiet down. I wait to make sure I, I can see, I can listen. And if the coast is clear and I don't have deer that are gonna immediately peg me if I'm up here rattling these things together, then I'll do my rattling sequence. I normally rattle for maybe about 30 seconds or so, and the whole time my head is on a swivel. I am looking around to try to see any type of flash. And if you see any flash of hair, dump these things and be ready. Don't continue to go until you can see them pop into an obvious location where they're gonna then see you. So I do it for about 30 seconds. I'll give you an idea of what I do. I don't slam them together unless I'm trying to call in a windy situation to a deer that I'm seeing a long way away. I'll normally do something similar to this. I alternate the frequency a little bit. Kind of imitate, they're together, they're pushing, they're pushing, they get after it. They get a little burned out, start pushing again. Normally when I come apart, I come apart hard so that things listening know the fight broke up and they're gonna be more curious to come in. I do that about every hour as long as the coast is clear when I'm sitting all day. And again, this can be effective here in the Midwest during really any time during those first three weeks of November. It can be awesome even later once a lot of the breeding has happened and those bucks, especially the bucks that aren't from your local area are cruising unknown spots, just trying to find those last does that are in because again, if they hear it, they're just gonna come in and they're not gonna know the area as well as other ones, so it could definitely play to your advantage. Now, when it comes to grunt tubes, having a grunt tube is something that you can have all year long. Deer grunts are pretty common, and if you're not used to hearing them, sometimes they're very light. Kinda of just sounds like a little buzz, honestly, when the fawns are doing it. Eh. Something like that, really small. I'm not good with doing it with my voice. But the bigger bucks will certainly start to do it during the rut. And when you hear grunting and chasing, honestly, if you can hear that, it's probably too close to rattle. So in that case, a grunt tube can be really good. Or if you ever have a buck that's kind of coming through, you, he doesn't think anything's around, you can just let out a light, soft grunt and he will definitely know where that came from. Now, most grunt tubes, you can adjust the audible to where they can either be higher pitched to mimic a doe or a fawn, or they can be very, very deep. I normally kind of go right underneath the deepest one unless I'm seeing a big buck that is actually acting ruddy and I need to challenge him. That's when I'll get that deeper one out. Otherwise, this is a call I've had I don't even know how long, two decades, maybe more. I'll go to a slightly higher pitch, not as deep as that. So something like that. I'll normally do a series of grunts that are a second or two seconds long, and then a couple faster ones that are a little bit faster paced because when I see chasing, I might hear a buck grunting you know like hey and then he's like come here come here come here <laughs> that's what i think he's saying so something like that has worked really really well for me a grunt tube can work during lots of different times of the year one thing i'm going to stress too before we end is if it's not a deer that you intend on putting your tag on i would recommend not calling to it if you want to practice calling come out here right now i'm doing a little bit of practicing when i'm on my way out that way i'm ready here in a few weeks when the time is right so i don't call to the animals i don't intend on 
taking a shot at because you educate those animals and eventually they're going to rely on their number one which is getting the scent of what they think is around there and if they bust you in your location even if you think well i'm not going to shoot them i'm not going to move they're still going to try to find that sound or that deer and they're most likely going to eventually get downwind of you or look up at you and you're going to end up getting busted you're going to educate the deer your calling is going to be less effective in the future and you might end up burning that spot if you have something that's snorting and stomping off so hey come here come here let's get it on it's the rut good luck everybody